everyone and welcome to our spotlight on lymphedema and one of my most favorite people in the lymphedema world is my guest today mr kelly bell has an inspiring story that will encourage your heart kelly it's so great to have you here today it's great to be uh here as well well first of all i'm digging your lympha press i love my pump shirt <laughs> Because I love my pump. <laughs> well, and I, we want to hear about why you love your pump, but I have to go back to the very beginning, if you don't mind. I'd like to talk about your journey, which was grueling, excruciating, depressing, awful, to finally get a diagnosis. Can you give me an abbreviated version of that story? Uh, I can go kind of quickly. Um, in 2005, I actually had a procedure for acid reflux and they injected polymer. It was one of the, into my upper esophagus, went up, made its path, went up, filled up one lymph node, filled up another, exploded, spraying that polymer all over my heart, my bronchial tubes and stuff, and then continued its path up through my heart, um, into my lung, filled up my middle lobe of my lung, and uh, my liver, my spleen, it's kind of all over in here. <laughs> and that's pretty much how I wound up developing lymphedema. Ironically, with all that happened, I, a month later, I was in a riot, coughing up plastic, not feeling well. Of course, chest pain, <laughs> no one can figure out what's going on. Finished my deployment, came home, spent another couple of years trying to figure out what's going on. And that's when my sister called me and said, hey, you know, that stuff's been recalled. And I said, when? She said, pretty much four months after you had it done. And so uh, I went to the doctors, they hit it with a CAT scan and that's when they just saw that I lit up. And at that point, I said, so what do we do? And they said, we don't know. And so that's, that's really frightening. All right. And you're not an easily scared kind of guy, I, you know, very, a very strong guy. And yet this had to play havoc with your emotions to not know what was wrong with you. And then to realize that the very treatment that you had been given was creating this condition. Right. And then for no one to have answers. That was uh, very frustrating because it didn't take me long after that to like, you know, I was very athletic before, triathlete kind of guy. And uh, I was training for an Ironman, even when I was deployed, I was like, trying to run. And I would like, ironically, after I worked out, I just kept getting bigger. And it just didn't make sense. I, you know, did what everybody else does. You start dieting, you, like reduce your calories and fat and all this other stuff. And I just kept getting bigger and kept saying something's wrong. And then. Wow. Okay, that's going to speak to a lot of people out there that are doing everything, quote unquote, that they think they should be doing to manage their condition, and it's not moving the needle. I talk to a lot of women with lipedema, but similarly with lymphedema, if you're not managing the condition correctly, it will worsen. Correctly, correctly, and it, it was sad to me, and I'll kind of jump ahead, I'll just to say, I've learned over the time, even information I was giving didn't help me from the doctors, you know, because you go and you do exactly what you're being told. And that was my frustration. I was like, I'm doing what you're saying. And they would say, well, then this should work. And I'm like, well, it's not. So what do we do? And still no answer. So, so how did you get to the point of an actual lymphedema diagnosis? Um, well, I, I fought, fought for years once. Well, and once they finally figured out what's going on, they want to accidentally pushing some of that polymer on my nerve. So I had a surgery where part of my lung was removed and those lymph nodes were taken out. Um, the rest of the plastic could not come out, it was stuck. So um, then I fought, uh, kept pushing because I knew something was wrong. I still wasn't well after that. I just kept getting bigger. And so I pushed my case to a gentleman named Alan Middleton got involved. He actually ran the medical um, um, program for the entire DOD, Department of Defense, and he stepped in, called the Surgeon General, finally got the test that I'd been asking for for a year and a half in the lymphocentigraphy. And when they did it, it showed I had significant blockage um, on my cisterna colleague. And to the point where, like, if you know anything about lymphocentigraphy, you're, when they inject it at your toes, the dye is supposed to come up and come through your heart within, or come up, like, to your, and be in your liver in your lungs within about six hours, this six to eight hours. Um, mine was still here at the end of the day so much they had me come back the next morning. 
and said, wow. yeah, that's, that's an issue. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good Wait, so you had to struggle to actually get that lymphocentigraphy test done for months? Oh, yeah, it was it was a battle. It was not like, oh, hey, we're going to do this. And this didn't even make sense to me because I had already had lymph nodes taking, like, in two, that was 2000, end of 2010. In 2008 is when they went in and took out, they exploded and filled lymph node in my chest, and I still couldn't get the lymphocentigraphy. Even though I'd, I'd actually gone to a civilian doctor who ordered it a year and a half before. And I'd been spending like, everybody care you. In this case, I was actually spending my own money going out trying to find any answers I could. I spent at that point in time about a little over $30,000 going to different doctors trying to get a diagnosis, you know, because. And that was funny when out when uh, Alan Middleton got involved, the Surgeon General for the Coast Guard, uh, his aide called me, and uh, he he asked me if they'd started a med medical board for processing me out. And I said, "How can you start one? You haven't even diagnosed me yet." And this was this was 2010, and understand, I started this process in 2005. And so, and at this point, I was I was swollen. I had neuropathy in my hands and feet, legs, and all kinds of pain and. It was crazy. And I was being, at that time, being punished for being obese now in the Coast Guard. And I'm like, I'm not, I was on a 1200 calorie diet and I'm obese and I'm, and no one had any answers for me. That is so frustrating. And yet it is, though it's a cautionary tale, it's a tale to encourage those out there, don't give up. You had to be your own advocate. Oh yeah. I mean, you just, you, you I, and I don't understand wanting to give up. I mean, I, I will be honest with you, it was uh, um, about 2000, in 2009, I'd gotten so frustrated and my family pretty much, I was, I was there, they had to take care of me so much. You kind of feel like you're, and no one's getting answers, you realize where this train's headed and you don't want to take your family on any more of this journey. And I actually wound up um, almost committing suicide um, and luckily, I will honestly tell you, if you're a family member, my supporting family is what made me decide not to because they have never given up with being there beside me and supporting me through all this. Um, so um, it would have been, I can't even imagine the loss because you're, first of all, such a great guy and you're such a powerful voice for the lymphedema community. I always say in my own life, my messes are my message. And everything I've been through leads me to what I'm here to do. And so too, your lymphedema diagnosis and how you've learned to manage your condition and your advocacy for organizations like Learn and other things, it's like you found your calling. A calling you would have never chosen perhaps, but. That is true. You, I guess you always try to make something positive out of it. And for me, it's just like, I just want, you know, over this journey, you know, you go through anger, frustration, like sadness, depression, and um, once you become educated, you understand where the gaps are, the people that are trying to treat you. Um, if you can get their ear, I found them very open. I mean, my current doctor is like, I mean, I just moved to where I live in North Carolina a year ago, got a doctor, and I walked in and I said, hey, I've got this medical condition <laughs> and this issue. Um, it's kind of crazy and he's like well i've been doing this for you know 10 plus years and medical school and after 10 minutes his chin's on the ground <laughs> yeah, because um, you, you, you win you got the worst and i will uh i've learned more about the lymphatic system in the 10 minutes i've had with you in my entire medical career so that's it but he's open and that's that's where i i am always like trying to target like doctors that are listening and open and, yeah uh, well, so you finally get your test. They uh -huh. bring you back the next day because it's showing that you're completely blocked. Yeah. What happens next? Okay, this is going to sound crazy. So this, so the, the, the lymphatic thing was on a Friday. They had me come back Saturday for the finish up. I go to my doctor on Monday, and the results are already there. Um, and he looks at me and he goes, "So what do we do now?" And I thought he was joking. And wait, he wasn't wait, wait, because wait, wait. I'd actually your doctor for the test and he's like, So what do we do now? He had no clue. What do we do with lymphedema? And so uh at that time my kidneys were already failing and stuff. So I was being seen at Johns Hopkins and Walter Reed. 
in DC. And so, I mean, you have all they had. And um, I said, I, I don't know. And I, I started, um, I reached out to the doctor at Johns Hopkins, a nephrologist, and he, I don't know if he intended to, but he put me on this list of, of doctors that he emailed things out to. Um, a lot of them are lymphatic experts. And well, they, they were actually not providing him many answers because my case is kind of odd. Um, but one did say, we'll try starting with MLD, send me to a, a fantastic um, lymphedema therapist, uh, Vicki Ralph in Maryland at that time. I think she's in Colorado now. Um, but she, we were talking and like working through things. And that was the start of, I say, of uh, reducing, slowing the progression of my lymphedema. That was, but it, it was not stopping. It, it, there was just, you know, you, you're battling plastic. So, oh. but. Oh. So MLD was really your first therapy. Right. What happened next? Um, next, uh, at the end, of course, I get compression garments, head to toe, because I have lymphedema from head to toe at this point in time. It's, I mean, mainly at that time, it was on the right side of my face, obviously, but it was on the right side of my body, my legs, my, my of course, my trunk. I always look a little chubby now, but I was huge then. No, I got to tell you, Kelly, you look great. Like, oh, you should say to me right now, first of all, that you were getting in trouble with the Coast Guard because you were quote unquote overweight. And for you to say that, you know, you have lymphedema throughout your body, top to bottom, you look amazing. So what oh, thanks. you're doing is spot on. And I'm excited that Lymphopress is part of that. But you started to wear the compression garments and that helped. Right. And then I was given a, uh, a pneumatic pump, not Lymphopress. Um, it was such a pain in the butt. I mean, anybody, I, I don't even have to tell you what it is because when I, like, it, I never could put it on by myself. One, when you have so many different garments and hoses and, you know, and Velcro and stuff you got to put on, um, it was, it was a huge pain and it was not productive. And I'm an engineer. And so I started looking at the mechanics of this machine and saying, this has flaws. <laughs> And that's, but, so I used it for about a year, but then like, you know, when you talk about compliance, here's what I tell people about compliance. I would only be compliant with something that works. I'm not going to be compliant with something I can't use and doesn't work because that's just as ridiculous as like running your head into a brick wall. If you're going to use a pump and it does nothing, that's ridiculous to me. And I would tell the doctor like, this is not working. And they're like, well, you should use it. And I'm like thinking, did you not just hear me? It's not working. And so I'm like, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Being an engineer and a super smart person, you might have come to the conclusion pumps just don't work. And I'm not doing this ever again. No, that's not what I came with. I started looking at the different ones out there. And I found, went upon Lymphopress. And I went, wow, that, that pump, the design of that one is anybody who has lymphedema, whether you believe them or not, wants their independence. And so you need, a, you need something that you by yourself can use. And so you need, a, you need something that you by yourself can use. And that pump, I said, well, hey, that looks like something I could use by myself. And then secondly, just the design of it and the functionality of it, I was like, that looks like it would work better, especially on my trunk. And that, which I think is the most misdiagnosed area of the body. I mean, um, so I was actually on Capitol Hill with Learn, um, doing some advocacy stuff. And we actually had one of the reps from the other company in my group. And your liver press guys came by the guys from the warehouse. I call them my three amigos, right? They come walking down the hill and they have their liver press shirts on. And I'm like, hey, I need to talk to you about your pump. And of course, the other rep was trying to interfere. And I pretty much told her, park it. You had your chance. I want to talk to these guys. And that's when I started asking questions about the pump. Because if, I mean, they're not cheap. So if you get one, you want it to greet. And so I just started going through, does it do this and does it do this? And what's funny is, is I never knew they were your warehouse guys. I thought they were your sales reps because they knew so much about the system. 
And the fact that they're actually on Capitol Hill lobbying with me to help get more research so we can like cure this thing and at least improve people's lives. I was like, oh, but so it wasn't what a year, a year later, <laughs> I found out that they were warehouse. I was like, you guys work the warehouse? <laughs> so that was impressive to me then because I realized if the people in the warehouse are this passionate about their equipment and patience, you know, it's not like, um, you know, like they're just trying to throw you out there a piece of equipment. I mean, I've, from the whole thing in this, I've been like watching Lymph of Press and like different conferences, someone come up and they'll say, well, hey, the pump didn't do this or we need this. And I've always heard the comment from Eric go up, like, as I'm like, eavesdropping like oh well, we've already adjusted that or we've already made that change and i'm like that's what you need especially in the disease that really is like when you think about it, it's been around <laughs> and it's in its infancy where they can actually even start diagnosing it you need a company that's willing to go okay that's wrong we need to make that adjustment right especially when you're trying to provide a patient something that's going to give them give them back their life because i tell people I lost my life for 12 years because of this and it wasn't, it, and it took me digging through research and, you know, I had charts of the lymphatic system on the wall and I actually redraw stuff as things got discovered that was not in the charts. I mean, that's what's cool. Like that's how much research is like the little bit that's being done is starting to find. And so uh, I just. That Kelly when we meet a patient like you that's willing to engage and give us feedback it's not just about getting you quote unquote the pump it's about the relationship and you've become part of the family you really are we so value you and your voice because it's as authentic as can be because you're walking the walk and in fact one of my favorite photos ever i'm going to edit in that photo of you with how many gallons of water in front of you? It's 12. <laughs> Once I reeled in my treatment plan, which is part of it's the ketogenic diet, which and the science that got me there, the pump and everything, because, and I want to tell you why I think pumps are so important. Sure. Is like I I gain like I gain weight when I work out. Not, I mean, after this pop, and it makes sense because I create more lip, there's damage there. It, it's like turning up pressure in a kinked water hose, right? So I create all this pressure. And so uh, before this, before the pump, before I had a good pump, I was pretty much restricted to doing like what my body could do minimally, which was walk. You know, and that's, that's a great exercise. That's good for you. But I'm, I'm only 52. I'm, I'm one of those guys I always like to stay in shape because I'm the kind of guy that if there's going to be an emergency somewhere, because I have some medical training because of my career, um, I'm going to be the guy running towards that rather than away from it. And so I need to be prepared, make sure I'm not part of the problem. And so uh, being able to exercise, that's where the pump came in. The pump, like, okay, so I've got everything else under control, but, and I can get it kind of, but I need to, like, I want to, I want to get healthy. I want to get in shape. And the pump helps me on my, my flare-up days. Um, it, like when I'm working out, come get that pump. It'll, it, get, it gives me back a huge part of my life where I can not only just like, I tell you, know, like usually you, when you go from spectator to participator, that's what the pump has done. A, an effective tool as like the, as the lymph press pump has done is given me, turn me from a spectator to where I have to like really manage things to where I can actually, contribute, like wrestle with my kids, my grandkids, you know, I tell people she was four and a half years old before I could even play with her because I couldn't get down on the floor. I couldn't, I had neuropathy in my hands and feet and she's seven now. And so if you can imagine the relationship we had then to the one we have now, I mean, um, it, I mean, lymphedema takes a lot away from you. Sorry. No, because, this is important. I, mean, I, I could not play with my granddaughter. So you know, when she saw me, it was always like, hey, Poppy, or how you doing, Poppy, you know, and she'd want to play, and, you know, and I couldn't, you know, because my hands and stuff. Um, now she comes running up to me and jumps, you know, because she knows I can take it. I mean, I'm, I don't have the neuropathy in my hands and feet anymore, um, and my legs. I don't, I mean, she can wrestle with me, and she knows I'm going to catch her and throw her around. Before that, 
I mean, and I was young. That's the crazy thing. I was, you know, in my late 40s or mid 40s when she was born. I could not touch her because it was just painful. And so I've, I tell people, like, you know, with the right treatments and the right stuff, I mean, you, you gain your life back. I mean, I, I lost 12 years because of this medical thing. I didn't give up. And I've had a little over three years of, of things are good. I mean, I still have lymphedema. I still have the flare-ups. I could still, if like uh, before the pump, I could actually put on 20 pounds in a, like if I had a crazy weekend. But luckily the pump kind of has reduced that. So, I mean, you know, it, there's, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I like guess now I uh, hike, I do what's called uh, rooking. I still want a backpack that has 70 pounds in it, and I hike five miles. And I'll either do that at home or I'll do it in the surf on the beach. And people are looking at me like, are you training for something? I was like, in case I'm needed. <laughs> but um, hey, I want you in my corner if ever there's an emergency, Kelly, because I know you will jump to it like Superman. Absolutely. What an inspiring message. The people that you meet that maybe have just been newly diagnosed, how do you encourage them? What do you, what's your message to them? Because they may be watching right now. Um, don't give up. Don't accept the status quo. Stay connected. Um, that's important. Like, just like this is the lymphatic system and knowledge is changing daily. Um, mm -hmm advocate become an advocate join learn that's a huge i tell people that i mean it's the organization that i believe is i mean i've seen it they're trying to get research directed towards our system um and haven't talked to researchers i've talked to the researchers at the va and when like the director we had had all the disciplines sitting at the table um, and she starts off with like, well, the lymphatic system touches every body, every organ in the body. And we, since we stay within our lanes, we, uh, we just don't know where to put it. So we don't do a lot of research there. That was last year. That's not like 20 years ago. That was last year. When I tell people like I had, uh, like I was on oxygen, my lungs are failing, my kidneys are failing, stage three congestive heart failure, um, irritable bowel stuff and all this other stuff going on. I mean, it makes sense when you look at the, all that lymphatics block for that. Um, and my liver was failing, all that was failing. And now I don't have, I, I don't, I have my blood work is great. Um, I have a pulmonologist that I see once a year and a primary care doctor once a year and my lymphatic therapist. And I go there every six months and we just basically just talk. <laughs> So tell me about how many times you pump a day and what's the particular pump you're using? Um, it is the, uh, Optimal Plus? Here, I'll show you the pump I'm using. Wow. This is my office. Um, oh, that's what I can't remember the name of it. Like I said, oh, I, okay, so I just use your it. lymph of pants right behind you. Right. And is the for one me, that it covers from the abdomen right, all the way down. From, down, from here down, and I use it twice a day. I use it in the morning, and I use it in the afternoon. Got it. Now, ease of use. Oh, <laughs> okay. You want to hear your cell point? When I got the one for press, I came in and I had my wife and my son because they're used to being involved in the process, and so we got the pump. We're getting ready to set it up, we're setting it all up, and my son's watching, and he's 19 now, I think he was 18 then, and so he's been dealing with my lymphedema pretty much his entire life, and so he was like a crucial point, like if my wife, she's Coast Guard, so she worked late, and so he was the other key factor in my, my functionality, which that's not fun when, you're, when your child becomes a tool in your treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I got into it, I zipped it up and he looks at me standing at the door and he goes, that's it. Said, that's it. I said, I, and luckily I, the app, I hit the button. <laughs> it goes, 
That's the thing. Really, that's it. I'm like, that's it. So you can use your smartphone like a remote control. Yeah, yeah. So you zip up, you hit a button, and boom, you're having therapy. Yeah. And if you can see in the like in the in the video, you see that white thing? That's yeah. where I put my phone so I can watch videos, read emails. <laughs> because I mean, even though I mean I have it, I manage it. I spend I tell like anywhere between two and three hours a day just managing my life at the end. I mean, it, it like I said, it is what it is. I mean, before I was managing it pretty much 24 hours a day and not getting any success. I mean, I manage it because I was living in the research. I was like trying to do everything I could, you know, and now I've got my diet and my pump and my treatment reeled in. And the only thing I have issues with is I don't like the trunk of compression though. I don't like their designs. But other than that, that's not your guys' issue. That's another, another battle. Like I said, I'm always poking, hey, <laughs> that's not right <laughs> we, we love that there are people like you that are always poking because that's why great strides are being made that's why change is happening every time i hear of a new potential drug or a new potential procedure and every time you know when we came out with the optimal plus it's like wow this is going to make so many lives better so i am running out of time and i just want to leave you the platform for you to say anything, people that are Googling lymphedema will find this video. What's your message for them, Kelly? Don't give up. That's all I, I mean, don't give up. Stay connected. Join, learn in your state, in the national. I mean, try to make a change. I mean, that's it. Yeah. That's wonderful. I look forward to more conversations with you. Before the world changed this year, we had plans to do a wonderful video with you and we still have plans for that. But in the meantime, I'm so honored and privileged to have had a one-on-one -on -one with you, Kelly. Kelly Bell, you are an inspiration. And I wanna thank you all for tuning in to this ed edition of Spotlight on Lymphedema. We hope and we know that Kelly's message encouraged you. If you know someone who should be interviewed for this series, please send me an email at bviola at medsoulsupplier.com. We love sharing these success stories because they bring hope and help to you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you.